Hi, I'm G. Welcome back to my art channel. And last time out, you might have seen me doing this picture here. But that involved quite a lot of blues. So I thought what I'd show you this time is how to do some brown neutral tones instead. So here's all the equipment I used, watercolour paper, a brown shell, Nova watercolour markers and a sable brush. And you can find links to all of the equipment that I've used down below. So here's the shell and I started this a little bit differently to the way I normally do stuff. I actually experimented putting water down first and then putting the markers down on top of the water. And I tried that a couple of times using the colours and I kind of liked it. It gave a nice kind of fuzzy effect, but it wasn't going to give me, I don't think, the tough, hard shadows that I was going to need for this shell to really get the, the shadows and the shade to really work. So I quickly reverted back to my normal method of putting the markers onto the paper first and then using the water to activate and make the, the marker color sort of run together and start looking like classic watercolor. As I mentioned in my previous video, these markers don't have names, um, so they didn't even have numbers on them, so I actually numbered them myself. And you can see me using the very, very lightest, kind of almost like a, a, a yellow ochre type color. That's my number one color. Then I moved to a number four and a five, which is sort of mid-warm browns, and then finishing up with a number six, which is a sort of dark, dark brown, really to give me a sort of real punch in those shadow areas. So early on with the painting, I was really, really pleased with the colours that I was getting out of this. Um, I was working from a photograph that I'd taken of the shell, so a bit of a slap on the wrist there for not working from live. Um, but already the colours and the way that they were blending, I could see that it was a much warmer kind of effect than the actual shell in front of me, which can be a little bit dull at times. So I was really pleased with the colours. The other thing that I found was that I, was, I had a method uh, already. So I was putting down the light colour, then the medium colours, then the dark colour, then blending them together with the brush. And that method was leading to the picture having quite a sort of stylized look so far. Not necessarily absolutely photoreal to what was in front of me, but this kind of stylized look, which I was always taught at school or told at school that stylizing stuff was bad, you know, and that you should try and make it look real. And stylizing, you know, meant that you weren't looking closely enough at the piece of work in front of you. But on the other hand, is that a bad thing? Because everybody's always striving to try and get a style or find a style for their paintings or their drawings. And I felt that that was kind of organically happening with this particular piece. So despite my sort of like, you know, teaching from when I was at school, I was actually quite pleased with the stylized nature of what I was painting here and the way that it was turning out. I was okay with it. I was totally fine with that. So, you know, I was able to sort of put all of that kind of school training and school ideas to one side and, and carry on with this uh, and just, you know, enjoy the painting. So as you can see me sweeping around now to the kind of um, the side of the shell, it's almost like a, I've got this kind of ice cream wafer kind of grooves in it. You can see one of the things that I really love about using um, watercolor markers on, for instance, the shells as opposed to the flowers. You can scribble your colors on. That's what is so amazing about it. You can just scribble those colors on really, really scribbly, get the water on, and then just sort of move everything around with the water. I find when I'm using the watercolor markers with flower paintings or flower pictures, I'm a little bit more precious about it. I'm a little bit more delicate and careful about the way that I add the colors, um, possibly because it's the petals. I'm looking for a smooth the um, kind of look whereas this being a shell can be as rough as you like and that's absolutely fine and that will actually help the the final look of the piece so I'm at the two-thirds away through point and I'm doing some little bits but I, I decide that that section the bit that I said was like an ice cream wafer was too pale was too light and I needed it to be darker so I just popped in here and again you can see me just scribbling color straight on the top of what was already there then working it with the brush just gently to try and activate it not too much because I don't want to kind of scrub too hard with the brush and mix everything together with the colors that are underneath but I felt that those grooves just need a bit more definition so I popped in some deeper darker shadows uh, and also some highlights there you can see me adding by putting fresh water on and working it and working it around to make a lighter patch just thought it needed those extra bits of uh, shadow and highlight to, to give it that 3D kind of feel. So moving on to the edge here, this is slightly um, more delicate so you, you can see finer lines being sort of painted and drawn here and luckily that is again one of the, the good things about these markers is the brush tip is super super fine. The brush tip on these is as fine as the size 3 brush that I am using to paint the entire thing with. So it's really good for doing some very very gentle very detailed line work that you can then activate with the brush. 
these little wavy dimpled sections you can see at the sort of very, very side of the shell um, are all about, you know, a dark, Bit at the bottom then getting towards light at the top so I've got to be very careful about the amount of color that I add here because if I add too much it could be very easily kind of like to just overload this section so you can see me just putting on little bits of color because a little bit of color from watercolor markers usually goes a very long way and with these uh, Nova watercolor markers the same is true you only have to put a small piece of pigment on the paper activate it with the water and you can see it's very very bright it's very very colorful uh, and it goes a long way. So you can see me just adding little dibs and dabs here to try and make sure that I get that sort of dark to light effect of these kind of like wavy shapes on this shell at the back. And I gotta say, drawing a shell is really, really good fun. So different to the way that I would perhaps paint a flower. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the kind of roughness, the rough qualities of a shell versus the, the, the kind of smooth colors and lines of uh, the petals on a flower. But it was really, really good fun to do. So if you enjoyed watching me paint this shell and perhaps the blue mussels as well, then uh, let me know in the comments below and I can perhaps dig out some other shells. I've got absolutely tons of them lying in boxes in the house. So I can break out some different ones, different colors, different textures, and perhaps have a go at some other ones if that is what you want to see. Likewise, if you're like, nope, want to see some more colorful flowers, then again, let me know in the comments below what it is you prefer to see. So there they are, side by side, photo and painting, and you can see what I mean about it looking stylized. But I quite like that about it, and I like the colors as well. But let me know what you think in the comments below, and please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. You can follow me on all the social medias under the handle gmassamart, and this video description contains affiliate links, and if you click on one of them, I might receive a commission. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.